The city of Philadelphia is one of the best kept secrets around. Outsiders who dismiss this town with a wave of a hand don't know what they're missing. Philadelphia is the fourth largest city in the country, and it is a major center of commerce, banking, and business. But there is much more to the town than just dollars and cents. For cultural opportunities, it ranks among the best. Some of the world's greatest museums, restaurants, and parks are within her borders. The same holds true for Philadelphia's colleges. In a city of many fine institutions, the largest is found right in the heart of Philadelphia. Temple University, with an enrollment of 33,000 students, has been serving the area since its founding in 1884. It offers one of the most comprehensive academic programs you'll find anywhere. And to the men who play football at Temple, there are many more advantages to the university. I'm from North Jersey, and the reason I chose Temple is because it, I felt it would give my family and friends from home an excellent opportunity to come down and watch me play football at Temple. Uh, the reason why I chose Temple University, I found that it would allow me to be a student athlete. Uh, I felt that it presented a good chance for me to further my education and also play in a highly competitive football program. And the thing that really impressed me about the place when I first came here was the closeness to all the players, the coaches, and it was like one big family. And everybody got along really well together. In 1979, Temple enjoyed a successful 9-2 season, setting or equaling 15 school records in the process. Temple was ranked in the top 20 by both wire service polls for the first time since 1974 and was justly rewarded by being granted a berth in the Garden State Bowl at season's end. The Temple Owls, flying higher than ever before, have shown that they can compete with the strongest teams in the country. And the best part of it all is that with facility improvements and a growing reputation, Temple football can only get better. But 1979 will be remembered as a year of success. When you speak of Temple football, you speak of Wayne Harden. He is respected throughout the country for his offensive innovations and coaching ability. But nowhere is he more appreciated than by those who work with him right on campus. Wayne Harden has been a, a, uh, just a godsend as far as the Temple football program is concerned. When he came on campus, we were struggling a little bit, and he just turned the program around, and he's just made the biggest difference. He's an outstanding coach, great psychologist, and one of the finest coaches in the country. When coaches go out recruiting, a lot of them say that uh, it's a pain. I don't look at it that way. I think it's a pleasure to go out and talk to prospective student athletes and talk to their families and, and see what kind of character they have. And all of our coaches go out looking for the same thing. Consequently, when they come in here, they all seem like they know each other because they, came, they come from the same background. And if we can get those type of kids in that we think are that type of character and that type of person, we think we can have a good, stable program. A good head coach needs good assistance. And Wade Harden has an excellent staff at Temple, a fact clearly evident on the Owls' practice field. Out of the ball, to the ball, to the ball! Nice, nice, nice. Real nice. Eyes, eyes! Ball! Shark over with the list. Hey, Tank, you don't need SS to the tight end side, you know. Just hit this man, let him take the bite, push him in. Guards, you got to come around deep. On the circle, you got to make sure you go down to 13 with the damn thing, right? Now to 13, you bring yourself back on in. Give it twins out here, tight end. Let Tyrone go motion this way, and we go straight drop back toward anybody you want on set. The hard work at practice is all geared to game day. And the first Saturday of the 1979 season was a good one for the Owls. They had learned their lessons well, taking charge immediately against West Virginia's Mountaineers. Quarterback Brian Brumell spread thin the Mountaineer defense with a crisp and efficient passing game. With the inside relieved of congestion, the Temple running attack flourished as senior fullback Mark Bright, number 30, scored twice. Temple's defense had an outstanding performance as well, putting pressure on the West Virginia backfield all afternoon. Number 44, cornerback Robert Keel's interception for a touchdown 
was the capper to a very big opening day win for the Owls. Temple returned to Philadelphia for their second game of the year. This one against the Drake Bulldogs. Last season's game had been an offensive explosion by both teams. But this time the Owls took over most of the scoring responsibility. Temple backs rushed for 327 yards. And the men of the passing game, not to be outdone, dazzled the crowd with a series of sensational catches. Like this one by Gerald Sweetfeet Lucier. And a pair by Wiley Pitt. When the dust had settled, it was Temple 43, Drake 21. In winning, the Owls had rolled up nearly 600 yards in total offense. Next was a match with the regional rival Delaware, the 30th meeting in the series. The Owls had not lost at Delaware Stadium in 10 years and had no intention of doing so this time. Quarterback Brian Brumell got things started on a rollout, setting off an early Temple scoring bin. And Gerald Lucier, number 45, hauled in Brumel's pass to give the Owls a 14-0 first period lead. The defense then did everything it could to make the lead stick. One blue hen drive was thwarted at the goal line by a Robert Keels interception. A second Delaware march found the ball inside the Temple one. But it took the hands three tries against a stubborn owl defense before they finally scored. Temple broke a third quarter 14-14 deadlock with three straight scores. The longest, the 58-yard run from freshman running back Kevin Duckett, number 28. The Owls had shown toughness in the latter part of the game. As much a tribute to Temple's outstanding conditioning program as it was to player talent and coaching. Weight training is an important part of Temple football, as strength coach Larry Kuharek explains. We feel at Temple University that we have a weight program and a facility second to none. We coordinate the Nautilus machines, of which we have eight, and the Olympic weights, of which we have over 4,000 pounds. We also test constantly the players in the bench press, the deadlift, the military press, the power clean, pull-ups, and the dips. So we keep a chart on you and your progression. It's a big part of our football approach here at Temple University. The thing that makes it really first class is the peer pressure we get from the players, the dedication that happens in this room, which is right in our locker room. The facility is open only to football players, and it's open for your convenience during the day, in the season, and in the off-season. Ernie, you know, since I've been here at Temple University, uh, the facilities have really improved. We have a wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in our locker room. Each kid has his own individual locker. Uh, we have uh, six Nautilus uh, right in the locker room. We have all the free weights that you could possibly want. The equipment's the best. Uh, I know you wouldn't have it any other way. Right. And uh, we're now playing at Veteran Stadium uh, downtown in Philadelphia where the Eagles play and uh, where the Phillies play. And uh, it's a first-class facility all the way, and I understand you got something else coming up. We have plans for a new field. Uh, we will have a complete AstroTurf football practice field. Uh, a 400 meter track, a uh, artificial turf track, which will just be beautiful. This will take up two city blocks. We got a grant of some two million dollars and it's just going to be a fabulous, fabulous thing. Veteran Stadium, the home of the Owls, was the site for the first of three critical games against strong Eastern opponents. The first matchup was with the tough Pitt Panthers, but the Owls were able to gain yardage against their stingy defense. Owl place kicker Ron Fiervante provided the points with a record three field goals of 23, 47, and 44 yards. And for most of the game, this output seemed like it would be enough. 
as Temple's defense shackled a very explosive pit attack. But despite big plays like number 55, Steve Conjar's interception, the Owls fell short as a fourth quarter Panther field goal from 46 yards out enabled the visitors to escape with an arrow 10-9 victory. Instead of brooding over a tough loss, the Owls came out firing the following week when they traveled to Rutgers to play the Scarlet Knights. The offensive line of Collins, Garza, Stinger, Benson, Prohaska, and tight end Drew Westnack ripped open huge holes for fullback Mark Bright and his mates as Temple's running ruined Rutgers' homecoming festivities. rushed for 243 yards and Brian Brumell threw two touchdowns to Gerald Lucere as Temple bounced back against the Knights with a victory Coach Harden described as the biggest in 10 years. Temple's high-powered attack would be needed the following week against a bowl-bound Syracuse squad that averaged 37 points a game. The Orangemen showed that explosiveness by jumping out to a 14-0 first quarter lead. The Owls quickly struck back as Brumell found running back Sherman Myers number 40 for a touchdown. Brumell also passed for a score to number 33 flanker Wiley Pitts. But this night belonged to Myers, a sophomore out of Coatesville, Pennsylvania. And only his second varsity start set two individual game records with five touchdowns and 30 points. The Owls' 49-17 win gave Coach Harden his 100th career victory. And Sherman Myers was a big part of it. Myers still has several seasons to go at Temple. But he, like many others, entertained hopes of someday making it into professional football. Everyone's dream in football is to eventually play professional football. I think you start with that in life, not many people make it. But when a boy comes to Temple University, we think he has an excellent opportunity because of the style of ball we play. We have seven boys in professional football at the present time over the last few years. And with the kind of talent we've been getting lately, we know we're going to have a lot more. Because of the way in which players are schooled under the Harden system, the adaptation to pro ball has been smooth for the Owls now in the NFL. Nick Mickemeyer has been one of the league's most consistent kickers, splitting the uprights around the league since 1973. The star of the New York Jet defense has tackled Joe Klecko, number 73. Klecko has led the Jets in sacks each year he has been with them. Cooper has played two years and has been in two Super Bowls with the Dallas Cowboys. Today, he is the starting right tackle on what is annually pro football's best offensive unit. And in Pittsburgh, where the 78 world champion Steelers play, two owls are seeing active duty. One is starting tight end Randy Grossman, number 84. The other is the owl's all-time leading rusher, Anthony Anderson, number 33. These players, along with running back Zachary Dixon of the New York Giants and wide receiver Steve Watson of the Denver Broncos, all succeeded under Wayne Harden's system at Temple and have blossomed in the NFL ranks. Temple's pro style may spawn yet another star for the NFL. Quarterback Brian Brumell. Brumell was the nation's leading passer for most of the year. Against the University of Cincinnati, the arm of Brumell and the guidance of coach Wayne Harden proved to be an unbeatable combination as the two collaborated for a dazzling offensive show. 
If they go in a man stack, 56. Well, not man stack. They're in a. Uh, they got a man on the center, and they got a flex, and they got another guy behind him. 56, 57. That's I'm not there, lead. coach. I lead. No, not there either. The only play would have to be in that end. Would have to be 91 or 21. That's away, right. away. That's not into right. it. Set. 57, 28. Lead you. While Brumell returned to the huddle for the next call, Coach Harden checked on an injured player. Okay. Okay. Just you win. Okay. You got lots of that. I know that. On the on the throwback, the safety man moves over to that side. The back, inside guy on twins wide open. Yeah. Perhaps the coach's vivid illustration of what he wanted in the passing game got through. From that point on, everyone was catching passes, and Brumel had his best day ever, connecting for 313 yards and five touchdowns. Temple's sophisticated offense, led by Brumel, was on its way to breaking individual and team seasonal records, such as most points scored, most total offense, and most touchdown passes. Cincinnati, like many of the Owls' opponents, could not contain Temple's explosive pro set and were gunned down 35-14. They might be looking for 55, and now you hit it right straight up to shoot. Okay. <coughs> Set! 18! 19! Three, two! Memories of good days are important. And Temple knows owning a record is a dream of any athlete. It is told me Brian needs one more touchdown pass to set a record. <laughs> I tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to put you back in. You need one touchdown to break a record. One touchdown. Hey, what they tell me. For what record? I don't know. But they call down up there. I don't know what it is. But I don't know, Coach. I'll get a record later, Coach. Let's get have a shot after Murph gets another series. Okay. All right. Give him another series. He's your quarterback uh, next year. Or he is. We get. Uh, we can get uh, about double. The team game. unity and desire for everyone to get involved in the fun is contagious, and often it, supplants like the need for individual that, goals, bubble, indicating owl spirit. So right or left, just stay in the wing, tailback. Tell him to stay on the wing. Go 90-91. Another attraction of Temple football is world travel. In 1977 and 78, the Owls played games in Tokyo, Japan at the new Mirage Bowl. But long after the scores of the games are forgotten, each player will still have memories of the Far East with its people, places, and customs. The Japan trips the last two years, I look at them as a, an opportunity that I had because I came here. I would never get to go to Japan by myself, by my own way. And because of Temple University and the football program, I got a chance to experience a whole different culture that not too many people ever get a chance to see. It was a new destination in 1979 for the Owls, a week in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii. During the days preceding their game against the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, the Owl squad practiced diligently during the morning. But in the afternoon, the cry of hang loose could be heard all along Waikiki. The Owls and their friends enjoyed a sun fest that surpassed any Frankie and Annette beach party movie. While the players were having fun on the beach, a large number of Temple Boosters were doing just as well with a full-scale luau near the hotel. For the time being, at least, the Cherry and White had taken over the island. Game day arrived, sunny and clear. A postcard picture of a day 
for what turned out to be a great football game. The Owls and the Rainbows would be seen on network television back in the East for the first time as ABC carried the game for those in Philadelphia who weren't able to make the trip. For those who were there, it meant a chance to improve their tans and to watch the explosive Owls at work. One shell of the arsenal was senior Mark Bright, whose brilliant career ended with him entering the 1,000-yard club for the year. The Owls racked up 561 yards in total offense, but with 27 seconds to go, the game was tied at 31. Matters were left up to kicker Ron Fiavante, who proceeded to settle the issue. Temple emerged with a hard-fought 34-31 victory, a great conclusion to an exciting trip. World travel and excellent football are all major elements at Temple University, but the most important factor is education. A conscientious program ensures that the student athlete at Temple keeps that in mind. We have a fine educational institution at Temple University. Uh, Gavin White, our assistant director of athletics, is in charge of all the athletes and their academics, seeing that they do go to class and they do study. We have a tutoring system that ensures that. And over 90% of our athletes that complete their eligibility have graduated, and we're very proud of that. One of Temple's most famous graduates is entertainer Bill Cosby, who visited the campus recently. While there, Cosby talked with students and Coach Harden and had some serious things to say about the importance of education for Temple's athletes. I think, first of all, Philadelphia, my hometown, is a great city. The respect in this time for Temple University in athletics is enormous. And with your help, will become even greater the respect for it. You come here and you play ball for the university. We make sure that you keep in mind that after your four years, you have to have something up here to carry through. Everybody can't go into pro ball. At the end of four years, you're a happy person. You've got to be because you're successful. Temple began its stretch drive against Akron, where senior punter Casey Murphy set yet another all-time school record with a 74-yard punt. While Murphy continuously pinned Akron back in poor field position, the Temple offense showed that it could score from anywhere on the playing field. Temple secondary of Keels, McCoy, and number 16, Mark McCants, stole three Akron passes. And defensive linemen Strike, Egan, and Peters were around the ball all day. Temple breezed by Akron 42-6, then journeyed to Penn State for a game with the Nittany Lions. Again, defense was a key as the all linebacking unit of Conjur, Curcio, Gordon, and Rosati held Penn State to only six first half points. Cornerback Rick McCoy intercepted a state pass to haul the drive. The Owls took the lead on a brilliant effort from freshman Kevin Duckett, whose 64 yard run put Temple ahead 7-6. But Penn State used ball control to regain the lead and finally did defeat the Owls 22-7. The day ended on a happy note, as the Owls accepted their first bowl invitation since 1934 to the Garden State Bowl.
Regular season action ended with the traditional head knocker against Villanova for the Quaker City Trophy. The Owls went out in style, beating the Cats for their fifth win on the road. A new season mark. The 42-10 win was another patented 79 Owls performance. Utilizing its stingy, hard-nosed defense to stop any opponent's momentum and lightning-quick big play offense to put points on the board. The Cherry and White made it look easy, cruising away with another Owl success. With their 9-2 regular season in hand, the Owl celebration happily is short line. Preparation for those Golden Bears of California in the Garden State Bowl, their first since the 1934 Sugar Bowl, occupies the mind. Along with the bowl appearance, recruiting athletes that will continue to enhance the growing respect for Temple University is a prime concern of Coach Harden. Everyone always asks what you're really looking for in a recruit. We're no different than anyone else. We're looking for kids that can play football. But we also like to see good students. We like to see kids that have a, a good family background, uh, that have character, that uh, care about what's going to happen to their future, and, and the future uh, of, of not only football and the university, but to themselves. And when we work with that type of individual, we feel that it's, it's more enjoyable, and thereby uh, all of our kids come together uh, they're the same type of individual, and they get along super. And I think the greatest thing in coaching is the kids that we have at the present time. The individual that is willing to sacrifice and be a part of taking on a challenge. That's the Temple kind of athlete. He is the reason for the newfound respect, the eagerness when looking toward the future, and the foundation on which tradition and pride are built. The sweat and hard work had all been worth it. Temple football, 1979, had truly been a year of success. <laughs>